Having a hard time trying to find MB2? Well, here's three different cases and three different videos, and we're gonna walk through different techniques to find MB2 to see if it's there or if it's not. Hey, I'm Ash from All Things Dentistry, and I'm passionate about sharing those unwritten tips and hints in dentistry. Not everything's found in a textbook, and you know, I mean, these videos, I want you to learn. So one of the questions I've been asked time and time again is where is MB2? So I wanted to take three or four clinical cases and some extracted teeth, booyah, and let's go through where's MB2. So using a couple different tips and tools that you probably have in your clinic today where you can find them for tomorrow. Okay, so here we go. We have an extracted tooth and then we have three clinical cases. And I really think that by seeing how different MB2s are placed and how easy this is a very simple one. This is this is MB1, this is MB2, there's a distal buckle, and we removed a lot of the restoration to be able to get better visualization. There's actually a crack running here. Taking a look at different axes of and we're not going to complete the whole root canal because the root canal is pretty straightforward. It's getting into the teeth. So that's really what I wanted to do for this next series. So this is an extracted tooth, like I said, that we'll have a video on. Uh, here's another MB2. And this is just the initial getting the files into it. And I'm gonna, I really wanna show you how I've troughed for these. And this is just the initial stages of getting into them. So this is a case here, this patient presented with symptomatic irreversible pulpitis to the max first molar. And this is just a teaser kind of to show you that yes, we're in it. Uh, but really what I want to do is walk through the entire, well, a shortened version of the access. So we're going to, you can see actually right here, there's a crack. I have never seen this before, a crack right in the composite restoration. So you're going to see down the road that as we access in this tooth, there is a larger crack that goes down to the floor of the pulp chamber. Uh, so we're just going to access from the mesial buccal cusp from the mesobuccal cusp to the palatal cusp with a number four long shank round burr. And I'm just into the pulp chamber and I'm just poking around with my explorer. And honestly, we could have removed and should have removed more of the restoration. And what that does is allows us to see more if there's another crack. So I'm gonna use my non-cutting tip endo zebra so let me see here you can't really see it but there's no end on it oh it's right there so it's a round little ball and that's beautiful because when you place it in the pulp chamber it just falls the pulpal floor all around and it's super smooth what i'm doing here is that i'm going to actually because this tooth is symptomatic to biting so it's symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis i'm going to take this out of occlusion but i'm also going to do is i'm flattening these cusps because it makes it so much easier to get a stable working leg. So this is a great photo that I was super happy to get. And you can see, here's the crack in the restoration. This is a composite restoration here. Here's a composite restoration, restoration here, moving out of the way. And what I'm trying to do is, this is our mesial buckle one uh, orifice, our distal buckles around here somewhere, and our palate is here. And this crack runs right down to about here. And we're gonna say that the tooth is still restorable um, we need a full cuspal res restoration, full cuspal, cus cuspal coverage respira restoration, respiration. <laughs> and we're just, I'm just kind of looking around to see if I can get an easy sign. Oh, there's a perfect, look at that. Easy way to get into MB2, but there isn't. So this is that crack and it runs right there and it stops. And what I'm looking for is obviously the initial orifices, but I'm also looking to see if I can find MB2 quick. And if not, and in this case I don't, so I'm just kind of probing around. So this is our MB1, distal buckle, and palate. And like the tip I showed before, trying to find a really quick way to orient yourself is to run a straight line from the palatal cusp to the MB1 cusp and draw a bisecting line from the, from the distal buckle. So I think distal buckle is right there. And if we bisect this line here with this line from the distal buckle, we're gonna aim maybe around here on average. So the next, because I can't find it, I'm gonna open the coronal two thirds and I'm actually gonna shape, clean and shape the main canals, the distal buckle, the mesial buckle one and palate to length with my wave one gold. And then what that does is it gets all, because this is vital tissue, we need at least 20 minutes of this full strength hypochlorite to, to dissolve and degrade that tissue. So while now I've cleaned and shaped this, 
the sodium hypochlorite is dissolving that tissue, now I can go ahead and try to um, trough for this MB2. So what I'm using here, this is actually a Mueller burr. My Munts burr actually fell on the floor. And um, <laughs> so uh, until we could find another one, we're stuck with this Munts. It's a fine, a Mueller burr. It's a fine burr. It's a number two, number, so it's a one millimeter round, round ball that goes on your slow speed. And literally I'm removing that dentin shelf. And what does that shelf look like? Well, let's take a look on this. So this is a website, it's in the links. It's a great, this is from 2003. It's from actually Robert Kaufman. He's an endodontist in Winnipeg, Manitoba, the school that I went to. And there's Max Remo, there's two amazing things that he has here. It talks about, so there's part one and part two about finding MB2. And these are great pictures. So I'll let you read that. And what I'm doing there with the white, so if we take a look at this picture here, if this is the MB canal, the MB2 canal, and this is this mesial lip covering the MB2 orifice, that's exactly what's happened here uh, in that video. So I'm actually removing that little white lip to be able to better get my something in there. So we're gonna irrigate that out, clean and rinse it. We're gonna actually have to do this a few times because I just, you know, there's a lot of, we got a lot of space we can remove here. And again, if you're, you know, the best way to practice this is on extracted teeth. Because you don't, you know, if you perforate, you perforate. And actually that's, that was actually interesting. I didn't realize I captured that. These burrs are designed to break like that. So you can see I was, oh, look at that, it comes off. It's like, fast forward, rewind, Whoop, back on. <laughs> so you can see it breaks right at the shank and that's the same as a glade glade. And so they're designed to break and I'm flexing it. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure I'm flexing it breaks and off we go. So I think at this point, I yeah, so I broke it. Now we found the Munz burr, which is much stiffer. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna continue troughing right underneath that. And again, I think I've mentioned this before in another video, you know, by the book, you really should carve out more of the axis. You could use a fine diamond. Diamond burr is a long shank diamond that dense by cells that Dr. Ruddle, excuse me, Dr. Ruddle talks about uh, in this case, we're trying to preserve, trying to preserve as much tooth structure as possible. So I'm just troughing back and forth, and I'm just troughing right along from the mesial buccal one cusp or the orifice to the pellet. Let me get that out of the way. So just more of that, more and more and more, more troughing. And I'm just trying to give you a sense of how much troughing is going on. Uh, oh, so I think after this, so what happens is I troughed, I couldn't find it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish the cleaning and shaping, I thought I did. Finish the cleaning and shaping of all my, uh, of all the canals to my final working length. And what I wanted to do is just throw in a point here, just about, I've created this free root canal course, and if I can get back to it, that's slightly embarrassing. Free root canal course, and the link is in the description, and just take a look at it there. There's also a subscription to Root Canal Secrets, and what this allows you to do, this will take you through all the secrets about how to better your endo. So let's keep on going with our MB2. So what I'm gonna do here is, this is actually a great part of the video here. So I'm gonna try to sneak a file in here. So this is a great image, I love it here. So this white line tells me that there's something there. There's a little, something is hiding in that dust, if that is dentin dust. And I'm trying to, like honestly, you could use a micro orifice opener. I'm trying to use a number six file to get something in there and it honestly is just not going. And then I'll take a 10 file, I'll take my Explorer, try to poke, and um, I think there's something like right there. Like I'm putting apical pressure. But you can see like normally you'd say, well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. You probably can trough some more. So what I'm gonna do is, well, actually, there we go. I'm gonna trough, I'm gonna trough some more. So I trough a bit more, and what I'm doing is I'm removing that mesial lip that we talked about. So I'm getting right underneath. And again, what you can do is if you're afraid of this, you know, remove some of this dentin right here. That's just restoration, so that can go. You can remove carious dentin, carious tooth structure, restorations. Those are the things you can easily sacrifice and don't even feel guilty about. It's like eating celery. I guess there's no limited calories in celery. I mean, when it's a the statement, you can, you chew away more of your calories than uh, in celery than eating. So it's kind of like this, removing restorations and carious dentin, carious tooth structure. So let's see what we got left here. We're gonna irrigate all that out. 
going to dry it, and then I'm going to take my Explorer. So now we've we've got more of a white line here. So you can see now we're trough down, and this is actually a little bit yellow. So I'm right onto the pulpal floor, definitely. I wouldn't want to go anymore. And I think, oh, there's a little sticker right there. Let's see the pullback. I think, okay. Um, so we're a little bit more magnification here. So I'm looking at right here. So if we follow that line between the these two orf palette and MB1 orifice and the distal buckle orifice, we're probably aiming right around there. It's interesting that that crack might actually that crack, crack might have actually created more of that mesial lip. Never know. The dentin kind of uh, the pulp responding to the crack as an irritation. And I was telling my dental assistant, if I don't find it here, we're going to trough more of this away and go more towards the uh, palo. But we'll stick with here. So the next stage, I think I take a 10 file, 6 file, try to weasel it in there. That didn't do anything. Like it didn't even bite. I think I take a 10 file. That didn't bite at all. That was just kind of more frustration. So at this point, what I do is honestly, I take a wave on gold. And let's just skip towards that. I take a wave on gold just to open up. And you, I'm going to show you what I watch for. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to bend it so I can get it right in there. And I'm going to try to get there. That little bit of dentin cutting right there tells me that there's something there. And I'm just going nice and light. I'm not forcing it in there. I'm not jamming it in there. I'm just going nice and light. I'm letting the file walk itself. And what that, those little cuts, those little bits of dentin getting cut, tell me that like it engaged something. So I'm going to just do a little bit in the tip. And then that's it. And then what I'm going to do, so that actually makes me feel pretty, I'm like, whoa, that is super cool. We got it. And interesting in this, you'll see down the road where that canal actually goes because now it's like, okay, how do we get down it? So I'm going to take a six file. I took a six file and I took a 10. I got to working length and I skipped that part out of here. And actually what happens is this canal, when I was doing my six and 10 filing, it actually opens like five millimeters from the orifice here. So this, this uh, dentin debris is actually from the MB2. So these two joints, so you can see all the debris is actually just a fin coming off. Not a fin, it's actually a canal, but. So, we'll irrigate all that out. And so we got that, so now we know we've got the MB2. I fished around with a, a, another pre-bent file just to see if I can get down there. So lots of irrigation during endos. I mean, it's just super critical how much time. I know John Rhodes had put, oh, there we go. So we irrigated out that and it sucks them back here, so. I'm trying to get a little bit of debris cleaned out with the uh, irrigating tip right there. You know, John Rhodes on his last uh, video talking about uh, molar endo in an hour, he has a pie chart talking about how much time is spent to irrigate and it's actually significant. So this next, we're going to finalize our working length and we fit our gutter percha cones. And then this is just the obturation. So you can see, I put this in here. I'm just finally uh, just packing down the, the gutter percha. So there's MB2. And then MB1 is right there, so we finalized it. So that's literally in most of the times. So in this, this is one situation where it was you had to dig a little bit for MB2, but then when you found it, it joined MB1 pretty easily. And here's the final fill. This is where my one light condens small condenser went right down beside, and I thought I was able to fill it in, but I didn't. So. Uh, this is just composite, and this patient actually does not have any probing depths. And we know that when we talked about this initially, just quickly, we had a crack running down the mesial marginal ridge right down to the floor uh, right here. So what we're going to do is I shave this down. I told the patient not to eat. This is a great article, and it's going to be in, the, in my Google Drive, and you'll be a link to it. And this is talking recently. This is just this month in the Journal of Endodontics, Success and Survival of Endodontically Treated Cracked Teeth with ridiculous extensions, a two to four year prospect cohort. So take a look at this, it's really neat. Uh, it's, oh yeah, so from July, 2019, and they talk about cracked teeth and the prognosis and in this study, uh, what they did with it. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Please place your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and we'll see you soon.